So no tripod today. It's quite sunny out. So I apologize if uh, the images are a little shaky. But I want to show you a few things I found out here. I'm tracking out at White Memorial in Litchfield, Connecticut. There's uh, 4,000 plus acres of protected land out here and some fantastic tracking. Let's take a look. I've already seen a bunch of stuff. I want to show you the latest thing I found. These cute little tracks. They might look big in your screen. I'll put my hand next to them for you. See how tiny they are. And they're in these pairs. You can see that all along here. Got a ruler here for some scale. Let's see how big they are. They travel in this sort of haphazard, paired, bound over in that way. We'll take a walk in there too. And these are pretty typical tracks of a weasel, uh, either a long-tailed or short-tailed weasel. And by the size. I'm guessing they're probably long-tailed weasel. Short-tailed weasel have really small feet. So let's get a little closer look in the bush there. The trail came from this very brushy area, which I'm not going to easily be able to get into with my snowshoes. So I'll follow along the edge and see if it had popped out into the field anywhere else. Uh, this is a typical gait for a weasel. Sort of two by two bound is what we call it. Sometimes in a few of these I could see three tracks but basically the front tracks come down and land and then pick up again the hind tracks land right where the front tracks just were um, the snow is deep but there's a little bit of a crust and then a little powder on top and the very light weasel and a lot of the other animals out here the squirrels and rabbit tracks I've been seeing are perfectly formed right on the top surface it's beautiful um, some of the tracks you might see in the background here actually are squirrel tracks too. And little weasels are something to be noted, especially in this area. In the past, the wildlife biologist here at White Memorial has uh, been keeping track of them and to see how many there are and which kind. And so it's an interesting observation to make. Um, in this sort of wetland edge, there's actually a field here, a big field. And through, pardon my camera work, through the brush, a ways here is a wetland area, a stream, and a pond, and a lot of marshy edge to that. And that's typical habitat of, the, around here anyway, from what I've observed of uh, the weasel family, especially the little weasels. So this is interesting, just a few feet away are some older, tracks I think a lot of that is the weasel um, and, and an area that was dug up if you look really close in there you can see actually the sun's so bright here I have trouble seeing the screen of the camera so I hope this is, looks good for you there's some hairs in there can you see that so backing up again whoop. There's some fresher weasel tracks. I think it returned again, to, I would guess, this morning. And I see hairs here and there, kind of blown about. Oh, look at this. That, oh, pardon my. Let's see, I'll pick it up. Where am I here in the sun? All right, there we go. That right there would be rabbit fur. Can you see that? I'll get it right in. I can tell by the color. Gray at the base, sort of a lighter brown. Where am I? Sorry about the camera work. It's tricky out here. Uh, lighter brown in the middle and kind of salt and pepper at the ends. Uh, and just the fineness of it, too, also tells me. Yeah, that's rabbit fur. And some of these are very long, which is interesting. Some of the ones on the ground, so it could be that I'm wrong. It could be that this is a squirrel, actually. I look even closer. 
Yeah, it could be. And then the long hairs would be explained by its tail. Um, there's some more. Goes to show you that, you know, don't make a decision too quick in tracking. Some more tracks. I, it looks like the weasel came back to where it or something else had already killed or scavenged. And pardon my shadow. My poor camera work, but right there. Nice long hairs. And these certainly look like ooh, they've been there for a while because it caused some melt. Certainly look like squirrel tail to me. Very cool. I have some squirrel tail hair at home that I can double check this against. Where am I? There we go. So this little creature keeps going in and out of the brush into the field, which is awesome, which means I can track it easily. Here. And everything you've seen is within, I don't know, 30 feet of where we first saw the weasel tracks. And I'm going backwards on this trail, basically. Well, they get smaller where the snow is a little less deep, which makes sense. Um, which means it's an even smaller animal than it might appear. Another animal that likes the edge of this field is uh, cottontail rabbits. We're getting really close. Let's see, we can see where they are browsing. They leave this very obvious. 45 degree cut because their teeth work almost like scissors or shears against each other. Um, I'll, I'll try to get a skull and show you when I get back home. So deer don't do that because they only have bottom teeth, but other rodents will. So if these tracks weren't right here, it, it could be possible that a uh, sign like that could also be from a uh, woodchuck or a beaver even. Um, but these are obviously fresh and go right with all these beautiful little bunny tracks which go all down the edge there. It's a little confusing because there's two sets here, one going each direction. You can see that there, one going each way to the left and to the right, diagonally. And uh, this is a very typical track pattern for rabbits with uh, the hind feet are actually the slightly larger tracks that are parallel to each other. And the smaller ones are the two that are kind of in the middle, in line. So, this and this are the hind feet. And this and this are the front feet. And it's going in that direction. Because they actually kind of straddle their front feet. And leave these bigger. And, and we'll see if we can find some splayed out hind feet because they can appear much larger than this, even though they're pretty dainty because they can spread their toes out. I think I see a little bit of that right up here. Again, they're kind of mixed in with other tracks, but you can see this one and this one. You can almost see some like toes in there, even though their feet are very fuzzy. Sometimes their toes sort of show up. You can make out individual forms anyway inside of the track. Those are their slight, very slightly spread, splayed toes. These toes are even more splayed with a hind foot. Mixed in with a whole bunch more tracks going both ways. So here's a spot where the weasel had to cross 
you can see here sort of a gap. Um, what used to it's an access to the river right there. Sometimes I see otter tracks down there, so we'll go down and check. But the weasel had to cross this to get from one brushy area to the next. I mean, I use this more like I don't know. You might call it a three by three bound. That's what Paul Resendez refers to it as. And it gets interesting as it crosses. It leaves some drag marks there, and it makes a big, big jump. Hope you can see that. And then when it lands, leaves a narrow trough of its body. Which often happens with weasels. They have that long, skinny body. The whole weasel family has a long, skinny body. Fisher, otter, mink. Um, So that's a good thing to see, to notice. Helps corroborate. Not that I wasn't too much doubt. And, uh, there's some other kind of deeper marks in there. The snow here is a little softer. The soft part is a little deeper. So from there, I left the trail. I uh, went to the brush and I headed out to the river and the pond where I got lucky, found some otter tracks, uh, which I'll have a video up of as well and after that some red fox activity which was also really cool so i hope you like this video if you did please like it and subscribe you can check out my blog at primitive skills practitioner it's a, a wordpress blog you can also go to my website three red trees school of natural living um, subscribe to our newsletter like us on the facebook page and come to a class Thanks.